Okay, folks, today we have another little road trip experience. We're going to go uh, visit a fellow club member, Rob Ziegler. He has, I, I went there the other day to buy some shrimp, and he has a lot of, a lot of pets, like a lot of really interesting fish and things, a lot of things I've never seen before. I'm excited to show you his fish room slash animal room slash animal house. <laughs> uh, that's all coming up right after this. It's always interesting to meet another hobbyist and, uh, and then eventually kind of get to know them. I, I got to know Rob. Uh, I, I bought some shrimp from him and stuff and, and the freshwater isopods uh, I got from him too. And it's been, uh, it's been an interesting kind of getting to know people from the club and kind of making new friends and stuff. Uh, I, was, I was really fascinated. I was just at his place about two days ago and I decided I'm gonna go back and uh, and film it again for you. I, I think you're gonna really love it, but well, without further ado, let's see Rob. All right, could you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Rob Ziegler. And uh, how many aquariums do you have in your house? I just hit 41 the other day. I would keep setting them up. So uh, it's not just aquariums though, right? You've got other things too? Numerous other things. I've got a parrot, dog and two cats of course but chickens i had a duck until a, a raccoon got on the other day oh, no. uh numerous isopods a few different uh lizards some beetles uh a turtle <laughs> they have some frogs so have you always kept uh pets like this or is this something that's like kind of built up over the years uh it the last five years has been uh, the biggest uh, increase in the amount of pets i've had especially the exotic stuff uh, it's kind of become an addiction, honestly. I'm finally running out of space, so I'm kind of limited on what I can have now. But it's a zoo in here. Yeah. And you don't do these to sell or anything either. These are, I mean, you do sell, like we met because I, I bought some of your shrimp at, at our local swap yeah. and stuff. But um, these are these are your pet pets. Like, this, this is your hobby, and anything you sell, really, it's for uh, to perpetuate the hobby. Right? E exactly, yeah. This is all just personal things I saw, you know, I've, I've got numerous varieties of certain fish. I just find one and then I want them all. So they, the tanks add up fast that way. I did start the shrimp in hopes I could try and sell more of those, but there's slow, uh, slow progress right now in getting the numbers up. It's hard and you've got to keep a lot of different varieties too, kind of going to like, because it seems like uh, I'll, I have one group thriving and another group's like kind of struggling and stuff. Yeah, exactly. I've even had some die off, and I've changed the colors just trying to figure out what's working best for me. I think I have 10 different varieties of shrimp right now. Well, they're all neo caradinas, but right. uh, 10 different colors. Uh, what's speeding like? It's at least 30 minutes every night. I can get home from work, and I'll turn the bubbler off on the brine shrimp to get them ready, start feeding those every other day, and I've got plenty of pellets and flakes that I feed as well, tons of frozen food, black worms, and I've been culturing the Daphnia and uh, scuds. I haven't really fed the scuds too much yet, but the, the Daphnia are a big hit, especially with all the native fish that are pretty much only eating live foods. Uh, what's maintenance like, water changes and stuff? Uh, water changes, I try and do it once a week, but, uh, you know, it, sometimes it turns out to be three nights of the week I have to work on it a little bit. It's about six to eight hours of water changes every week when I get around to it. Sometimes I go every other. Uh, it seems like you primarily filter with sponges and stuff. Yeah, uh, almost all my tanks except I think two have canister filters on them. I don't like hang on backs. I honestly think they're a scam. You know, just for the companies to sell you more cartridges. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, you, you get you know, really good results with uh, the air-powered uh, sponges. And you have, a, like, one pump, and it's kind of distributed amongst a lot of tanks, right? Or kind of in different areas? Yeah, I, I have all but one tank that is run on sponges in my living room or off of one uh, central air pump. My only other one's a 
the little solo three gallon has its tiny little pump to go with it. Uh, and you know, as long as you have everything adjusted right, you can have the proper airflow, and it works works quite well. What types of fish are your most uh, favorite type to keep? Currently, it's the Elisoma, the pygmy sunfish. I, I really like nano fish and the vibrant colors that you can get out of them and really draw me to them. They're really, they're kind of difficult to keep too, aren't they? Uh, well, the the fact that they only eat live food is, is a little difficult. Uh, once you get past that, they're not too bad. You know, they're tiny, so you can fit a bunch in a small tank and a lot of people actually keep them without any filtration. I like air filters and everything though, so they're haven't had much of a problem. The The babies are a little hard to raise, though, because they are absolutely tiny when they're born. Um, but I am currently have two tanks with babies in them, so I'm hoping for success with the rest. All right, well, I'm excited to take a look around. Let's take a look. So what, what's this guy here? Just a basic bluegill. As long as they're legal to, uh, to keep as far as sport fishing goes, you can keep them. Oh, uh, really? Yes. I didn't ask specifically if in a tank. Oh, okay. I was asking in reference to my pond in the yard. Yeah. And they told me that since it's not like a uh, like a real pond, it's you know a man-made small pond. That anything that is within size limits, you can keep. So uh, tell me about your crusty. Uh, his name's Frank. I've had him for I believe five or six years now. He's on the smaller side, little frog butt. Uh, custom tank that I set up, all foam and silicone, lots of carving, and it's bioactive. There's springtails and isopods in there with the misting system. So what are these guppies? Uh, they're dragon guppies. Come here. Uh, there is a trio of garden rye killifish. It started as just a pair and. Uh, only ended up with one baby. Uh, usually you have to separate the eggs out, so the parents just ate everything else, I imagine. Very colorful. The female is always hanging out up front waiting for food. <laughs> yeah, there's orange sun-kissed shrimp in there. And a koi betta. Uh, these are Typhlonectus natans, the type of Sicilian, which is an amphibian. I have five adults in there, and I just recently had, I'm thinking, five babies. Uh, they are born, uh, when they're born, it's, it's a live birth, and they have gills that drop off after the first few minutes when they're able to finally get up for air. Uh, so you can s somewhat see that there's a scar on the back of the head that will later disappear from where the gills were. What do they eat? Uh, primarily Hikari sinking carnivore pellets. I've tried a bunch of different kinds. That was the only one they like. Uh, and then earthworms. But you have to chop them up. Once they smell that blood in there, they're like sharks and they all go for it. Start swirling around, munching down. Other than that, they stay buried half the time. They love the deep sand. Uh, the babies are a lot more active than the adults, it appears. Are those the babies there we see coming out of the woods? That is, yeah. They uh they about five, six inches right now. I wasn't even sure the that the the adult was pregnant. It kind of looked like a, a muscle a muscly arm with like veins bulging. You would just see it when she would move the lines in there, which and I didn't know if that was a baby in it. Lo and behold I get five babies one night. So what do you have going here? Is this a terrarium or a paludarium? I guess? Yeah, it's a paludarium. Uh, it's another tank that I built with styrofoam, silicone, and different substrates and wood built into it. Uh, it's housing two budgets frogs. They're both on the small side still. Uh, they get fairly large as an adult. They're also called the hippo frog. Uh, when they're on land and frightened, they'll puff up and stand real tall on all fours and scream. And they look like little hippos then. Huh. Have you heard, ever heard them scream? No. I, I've never actually seen them on land here. I think it's more of a thing they do for people that just want to be cruel and shoot videos with them. Oh. There's also videos of them eating baby chickens and all kinds of stuff online. 
these frogs? Yeah, they get about five, six inches almost, full grown. Wow. These are pretty young, I guess, huh? Yeah, I, I think they live at least 20 years, so they're getting there. I've had the one a little over a year. The other one I just got a few weeks ago. Then I also have a few uh, Hasbrosis pygmies in here. Uh huh. And one lonely uh, Elisoma Gilbert Eye, I believe. And a few shrimp. The Elisoma ate almost all the babies, so I pulled almost all the shrimp. Uh, did you make this background and stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's all custom uh, foam work. The The bottom half is uh, got a sand substrate on the wall, and then the top I use cocoa fiber. Lots of neat plants and stuff. Yeah, I tried a few different things. A lot of them didn't make it, but uh, this is what we have left. A little spider plant, a couple ferns. And there are isopods and springtails in the little land area. Oh, oh, over here. Yeah, so it's technically bioactive. Well, that is a really, really pretty display. Thank you. I put a lot of work into it. It probably took me 30 hours. That's nice. That's a 40-gallon tank, right? Yeah, it's a 40-breeder. It looks nice on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would try to take pictures of my phone, and they turn out... Horrible, you know. Yeah, sometimes the fun ones work out really well, and sometimes they don't. Yeah, uh, these are called least killies, even though they're not a true killie fish. Uh, they're native to uh, North America, and they are live bears. Oh yeah. Yeah, then they're a lot different than a standard like guppy, though. They have stages of birth. They they won't all release at one time. They'll have a baby, and then maybe a couple days later, they'll have another baby. So they're all in different stages of development. Oh, they're Probably not... because they're so tiny that they couldn't develop, that, you know, a bunch at one time. Maybe they just felt like it was the least they could do. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you feed these guys? Just the same as the others, like the flakes? And... Yeah, I, I started out feeding them flakes. you got to crush them up real fine. Um, I've tried some pellets. They're kind of on the big side uh, for them to eat. Uh, they love baby brine shrimp. Absolutely love Daphnia, especially Cereo Daphnia. So I, I try and mix it up. What's going on in this other tank? Uh, there are hopefully still five orange eye blue tiger Caradina shrimp. I purchased them from a gentleman at the Chattanooga Fish Club swap, and he told me that he raised them on uh, Neo shrimp parameters. So. A little, a little bit easier to take care of at that point. Yep, I got the same ones. Hopefully awesome. They, maybe they'll come out later. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> All right, so what do we have going in the corner here? Uh, a Jackson's Chameleon. It's a female. She's pretty small. Uh, I would hope for a male when I got her. Apparently, they have horns from a young age, and if there's three horns visible, that's usually a male, but... Occasionally the females will have horns, so that's what I ended up with. But she's probably sleeping right now. So you got uh, you got the live plants in here and a misting system and the the ventilated. You gotta you gotta keep them really well ventilated, right? For sure. Uh, I do have the sides wrapped to kind of hold more humidity in there. Oh, like a uh, like with um, what do you call it that? This stuff, this weed blocker or something? No, this is, it actually came this way and I just left it. It's shower curtain, I think. That somebody oh, really? just taped on to the side. Huh. But it works well. I would have gone with black instead of the white, but. Well, if she comes out later, we'll take a picture. Sure. All right, so tell me about your wall. This is a wall of isopods mostly? Yeah, mostly isopods. I have 20 something varieties. Um, some of my favorites are my. Hoffman Sedges. Hoffman Sedges? Yeah, it's one of the uh, largest varieties. You see right here, that's one of the, the larger males. And they actually get bigger than that. You can tell it's a male because the, uh, the little tails are a lot longer than on a female there. Wow. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're really it's neat looking. Definitely one of my favorites. They look kind of oily, but they're not at all. 
Wow, how cool. What, is, what does it take to, uh, to keep isopods? A tub, a few air holes, a leaf litter, some soil mixture and wood, and then occasional fish food or vegetables. They're different types, like some will prefer veggie, some will prefer protein, like dehydrated shrimp and fish are one of the best things for the protein loving ones. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what else you got? Uh, I've got uh, one of the more popular ones out there that a lot of people have seen are the rubber duckies. This culture is still pretty small. Um, there we have a few different sized ones. They're a little more on the blonde side as a baby. Or they, a baby is called a, a mankai. Mankai. Mankai ducky baby. <laughs> But these are definitely one of the more popular ones in trade. They're pretty expensive. And, and they do look like, uh, I guess they get real yellow and they do kind of look like rubber duckies. That... Yeah, they have almost like a, a bill on the front and two little eyes that you can actually see on the front. Since it's yellow, they kind of pop. Those are definitely one of the more popular ones. I'd, then I have different variations of like four different kinds of the same variety with just different color. Um, another cool one is like the Japanese magic potions. They kind of have this, the different spots, yellow and brown and silver in some of them. Wow. Yeah, those are one of my favorite as well. And all of these cultures have springtails. Some uh, need to be replenished here and there. As you can see on the rubber duckies, there's a little mold in there, so just need a few more springtails. But they're uh, they're interesting. You know, as a kid, everybody played with roly polies, <laughs> and now it turned into the expensive adult version of it. Yeah, who knew, yeah. Who knew that the roly polies would be so fashionable one day? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So scuds, snails, and black worms in here. That's correct. Is it? Are they for food, or are you just doing it for fun? I'm doing it for fun. You know, scuds are a type of shrimp. I like shrimp, uh, and they're kind of fun to watch. It's like a little circus inside there, the way they swim all about. Yeah, it's a neat little tank, too. Is there any filter in there? Not at the moment. I am going to add a uh, sponge filter to it that I have in this other tank. I'm going to swap them around. But it doesn't really need it. You know, it's just basically a food culture tank that I don't feed. So, um, are most of your tanks run off air? Almost every one of them, except my largest tank and my paludarium, they have the uh, canister filters. Everything else is air-driven. This whole room, I think there's 12 tanks set up on it. It's all run off of one central pump and a couple hundred feet of air tube. Oh, and this is where the uh, freshwater isopods come from, huh? Yes, hundreds of them, uh, as well as a couple African clawed frogs that I took in from somebody after they went to college. It's a, a pretty dirty tank, but the frogs really enjoy it that way, and the isopods have just been thriving. So, uh, what do you, what do you, what do they eat? What do you know about these things? Uh, well, they're they're a lot like their terrestrial version. They just eat decaying matter. So, the you know breaking down aquarium wood is ideal food for them. Plus, they'll eat scraps of you know what the frogs don't eat, and probably the poop as well. There's the froggy. What are the frogs like? Uh, I give them oh, frog pellets. Sometimes worms, but their pigs and worms are expensive, so they don't get them that often. Uh, these are brook sticklebacks. I believe they're native to Ohio area. Oh yeah. Yep. What what kind of what kind of plant is that? So what's that grassy plant in there? Is that the Val? Yeah, it's a uh, Italian veil. Uh, if you've noticed, almost all my tanks have Italian veil in it. For one, uh, I was able to, you know, propagate them off of the original batch that I ordered. And two, it, it looks pretty natural. You know, veil is pretty much all over the world of different varieties. This is a smaller growing one. And uh, I kind of have a simple approach to my aquascaping. I have so many tanks that it's just easier to have something that I don't have to worry about dying back all the time and fertilizing. I think sometimes you get a plant that just does really well and then you just keep using it. Exactly.
Plus, I, I really like the, the fact that it looks pretty natural. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are still pretty young. I think they max out around two, two and a quarter inches. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, there's uh, eight of them in here at the moment. I'll probably have to go to a larger tank once they become adults. One of the craziest things about them, I read that when they uh, decide to spawn, they, they'll pull plants together into a big ball. And the, it'll, the male will hollow out a little entrance and then lure the female in, trap her, seal it up, and then they do their thing. And then the male will escape out through another hole he makes. Wow. So what do you like to feed them? These guys will only eat live foods, sometimes frozen, but once it hits the bottom, they don't really mess with it any longer. So I primarily feed them black worms and uh, Daphnia, some baby brine shrimp. They don't always get it all. I think a lot of the times the snails end up finishing it off. But they go crazy for black worms. And you said they were native to Ohio? I believe uh, they're from the Ohio area. They might be in some other states, but that's... I I think where they were originally collected from. These are captive born babies. Have you been able to breed them yet? No, I've only had these a few months. Okay. So I'm still raising them up. But I would like to breed them. Uh, they, you know, they have really wild uh, breeding habits that I would like to be able to see. And this is another thing where, you know, being a club member and just being in touch with your local fish keepers and stuff, you find interesting little projects. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not easy to find native fish in stores, so you have to have those connections to be able to uh, come across some of these species. Okay, what are these guys? These are called blue death fainting beetles. Uh, they're native to the Sonoran Desert in the U.S. Uh, they are blue in, in color, but it's actually a waxy secretion. If they have too much humidity or moisture, they turn black. And one of the really neat things about these is most beetles will live the majority of their life in the larval stages. And then they, you know, once they hit the adult beetle stage, they mate and die. These guys are actually known to live 10, 12 years plus in captivity. They'll play dead if you touch them. They'll roll over, feet up in the air, just like a possum. Really? Yeah. These guys, uh, they will occasionally eat a dead cockroach, uh, like a dubia roach. They don't like the live ones. Uh, they'll put, throw some fruit or some vegetables in there. They don't have a water dish. They just suck the juices out of you know the food that they're eating. And they don't even need to eat that often. I throw a little bit in there maybe once or twice a week, if that. And I've gone a few weeks without feeding them. What do you have in here? Uh, I have Elisoma evergladii. It's a type of pygmy sunfish. There's two males and one female and some babies. I don't know how many. They're so tiny it's kind of hard to keep track of them. They are famous for hiding a lot. Uh, this is right here next to the couch so you can uh, maybe catch a glimpse once in a while, right? Yeah, every once in a while the, a male will poke his head out. These are also native to the U.S. and the southern states. Okay, so what can you tell me about this tank? Uh, this is my only named fish. This is Mud. He is a West African lungfish. Still pretty small. They can grow up to four feet. I'm really hoping he doesn't get there. And then I also have a Diamondback Terrapin in there and a, a colony of uh, Black Bar Endlers. Uh, mainly as food, but they can't pick them all off. They're too tiny. <laughs> the terrapin's really cute. Yeah, he's pretty. And he's fully freshwater, so that's why I have them together for right now. He said that uh, these have to be born in freshwater to be... Otherwise, they could be brackish? or Yeah, they're primarily brackish in the wild, uh, but I guess if they're born and raised in freshwater, they can be kept in freshwater their entire life. But if you take one that is adapted to the salt, they can get um, shell rot. Ooh, yeah, a monster. Yeah, they, they really are. They, uh, they're air breathers, so that's why he comes up all the time. 
And one of the coolest things about a lungfish is they're from Africa primarily. They have other varieties, but in periods of drought, they can bury themselves down in the mud and they create a mucus cocoon and can live in that cocoon without food or any additional water for four plus years. Wow. So what's going on in this tank down here? Uh, there is a small group of pygmy quarries in there. And then there's also the Blue Dreams that has been supplying a lot of the uh, local club here and other people. I've pawned off about 300 plus shrimp this year locally. Wow. Yeah. A lot of the people that have Blue Dreams, uh, they've come from here. It's a dreamy tank. <laughs> The numbers are pretty low right now after the swap. It kind of wiped me out, so they're rebuilding. This tank is so awkward, the shape of it. Yeah, it's it's long and uh, we're getting a lot of reflections probably this time of day. You definitely have to shoot this at night with all the windows and stuff you have in here. Yeah. Hopefully I can just get a good sense of it. Yeah, that's the, the windows is why I had to put all that... Uh, thermal material behind there to keep the algae down and keep the temperature down as well. Yeah, there's four USB fans hooked up uh, in a custom lid that I built, uh, and it's also hooked up to a thermostat. I have it set to around 67 degrees because these are cool water fish, especially the darters need the cool water. And then here we have another uh, small amount of aquariums. <laughs> 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 array of aquariums. Uh, what's what's going on in this first one here? Uh, this 20 long here uh, started as a cull tank for my shrimp and I bought a couple of uh, freshwater pipefish and unfortunately they all disappeared within a few days because the pipefish just love snacking on them. Um, so now there's one pipefish and a yellow tiger pleco in here. And uh, what's what's going on in this one? Uh, these are just uh, some cherry shrimp. Cherry shrimp tanks. That's carbon rillies. They're pretty hard to see. Yeah, it's they're pretty much black rillies. So on a black background, I don't see them all that well, but it helps the color. So are there? You got any? Uh, are these mostly shrimp and stuff down here? Yeah, almost all these are shrimp. Uh, the first tank here does have uh, has red rilly shrimp, but it has a small group of clown killies, uh, which are right. more of a, a surface dwelling fish. I see them now. I'm hoping to get babies at some point this year. Oh, I hope you do too. I hope you have so many babies you want to sell some. Oh, I, really like I would be happy to. They are beautiful fish, especially the males. And then we have green emerald shrimp, then orange really, Bloody Mary, Gold 24 carat, and last we have orange sunkist. Colonies are pretty small right now. Uh, some are doing well, all right. Others, I've had some die off of another color. Some it's kind of a learning game for me. I haven't figured out the secret of shrimp. They can either do really well or just slowly but surely get there. Oh, and in the floor you got some live cultures. Yes. Uh, Cassandra kind of turned me on to the whole live food thing. I started out with six five-gallon buckets outside, and those cultures kind of crashed once we got cold weather. So I set up uh, with the design that I found in a live culture group on Facebook. Uh, I have Cereo Daphnia, and then a larger variety of Daphnia. I'm not exactly sure what they are. I also have Scuds, and then a culture of a uh, single variety of green algae that I'm using as a food supply for the Daphnia. That's what's in here, right? Yeah, that's my backup tank. And outside, chickens. Yes. Chickens, a greenhouse. There are tubs of, ta of tanks out there, but... Wow, it's, so you uh, breed fish out in your greenhouse? Yeah, I bred mostly guppies this year. I've got a few shrimp out there as well. They're doing fine, but the guppies, it's too cold for now, so it's mostly shut down. So uh, there's no babies swimming in that, right? <laughs> no, 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 they died. Uh -huh. uh, I do also have an IBC tote that I uh, cut the top off, which is a 275-gallon tank out there. Yeah. That has uh, a couple bluegill, 
one feeder goldfish that I use to uh, cycle the tank, and he's about nine inches now, and also a bullhead. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, I really like native fish. Oh, and you got some more aquariums over on this side, too. Yep, this is my newest rack I just set up. Uh, as you can tell, I kind of uh, haven't done much with them. Just threw in some moss. but yeah, I Moss is sure handy for that. For sure. Especially when you're trying to raise babies. Uh, the, the bottom, I just have a couple of different varieties of... I have an endler and then some guppies. Probably going to get rid of the guppies and put something else in there. Very pretty. Around this platinum and black. And the parents of these are outside in a tub because they do, they are cold hardy, so they, they winter well outside. But I just wanted to give the babies a better chance of survival. What are these? They're Mendaka rice fish. Mendaka rice fish. Yeah, there's platinum and there's a few black ones in there. I'll separate them once they become adults. Okay, so what do we have in this one? These are another variety of Elisoma. These are Gilbert Eye. Probably the, the most beautiful of the Elisoma varieties. The males, when they're in, in color, they are dark black with neon blue. And these are native to the U.S. There's a subdominant male down towards the bottom there. Yeah, if you look down like two inches down to the right there's a male but when the subdominant ones they don't color up as well all right and over here uh, more pygmy sunfish but these are these are again very the, hidey right yeah definitely they they hide 99 percent of the time those are elisoma evergladii what do you got going on up here uh beta sorority uh there, i think there's around seven females in there there's uh, a couple of stiffening gobies. They love hiding in the rocks and the holes. Uh, there's also a couple banjo catfish and a clown pleco. Wow. What's your experience with a beta sorority been? Is it uh, well, it started I think 13, and now it's down to seven. I never see them fighting. I occasionally see some tattered fins. So there's definitely a hierarchy. Um, this is a pretty big tank here. Uh, these are usually salt water, aren't they? Yeah, it's a 29 gallon bio cube. Then they are set up primarily for uh, salt water, but I got it for 20 bucks and I love the curved edges of the glass, so I couldn't help myself. Wow, it's super clean too for, to get a, such a good price. And you've just kind of wedged fresh water lights up in the hood and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I just took the, the hood apart, added a couple of light bars, and uh, it was worked quite well. As you can see, the grass has taken over. That looks great. Yeah, this one has some standard jungle val in there. That's why it's so long. Uh, this one does? No, the bio cube. Oh, the bio cube. Yeah. So what, what's going on in here? More pygmy sunfish? Yeah, more pygmy sunfish. This is the zonatum. Uh, they are actually, there's one right over here on the side. These are more like a striped version, like little zebras. These don't uh, color up the same way as the other varieties do. I don't know if they get the blue like the others. And then I also have a, a group of Lee starters, tiny little guys. And I think they're from like the Midwest area. Max out like just over an inch in length. That would be a darter right above it. Oh, darting around. Yeah, darting around. They basically look like gobies the way they, you know, they, they lean up on those those front fins there, almost like a tripod. And there's 11 of them in there. Wow. Yeah. Do they breed for you? I haven't had them long enough. Um, I'm doubting I'm going to have much luck because there's so many fish and it's such a small tank. But if I'm lucky, you know, maybe I'll pull some aside and try. I have heard of them being bred. What's going on in here? Elisoma, the pygmy sunfish. These are the Okades, which is one of the more rare varieties. Oh. Yes, I already have people asking for babies on these if I uh, get lucky enough. Don't see any else. Yeah. They're so tiny. Most I don't think any of these are full grown, so they're probably about a half an inch. 
and uh, they only get an inch full grown as it is. So yeah, we might have to tune back in to see see what happens here. And then exactly. this is your your pride and joy, right? Yeah, this is my newest uh, big project tank. This is a a forty gallon breeder that is a uh, river manifold again. So it's got a one directional current. This one has stronger power heads than the longer one that I have. And this is stocked with uh, all U.S. native uh, fish. I have rainbow shiners, southern red belly dace, central stone rollers, uh, fiery black shiners, and then I also have a few rainbow darters and a couple greenside darters. And there are also some dwarf crayfish in here that are also from the U.S. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of fish in one tank, but I've been able to keep the, the parameters within a, a steady, safe range. So it's uh, just one I have to check on a little bit more often to make sure everything is going well with them. And this is definitely my most difficult tank to feed. The, uh, you know, the huge school of fish up top, they'll eat everything that goes in there. So I usually start off feeding them either some frozen cubes and let it break up or put some flakes in there. And then once they eat a little, I go with my uh, two and a half foot long tweezers and spot feed the darters. Otherwise, they won't get any food. Huh. And they pretty much eat black worms. I can really overfeed with frozen food and they can get a little bit that way. But otherwise, you have to make sure they're eating so they stay healthy. Wow. What a gorgeous tank. Thank you. And some of these are actually native to Tennessee. And the, the laws are pretty strict here. You can't uh, acquire them from in-state. You can't collect them from the wild. You can only purchase them from a licensed uh, dealer out of state. And you have to have proof of uh, purchase to be able to legally keep them according to TWRA. So you have a receipt from somebody that is allowed to collect them? Yes, exactly. To show that you purchased and didn't just go pick them out of the water yourself. Definitely. And these are not in season right now. When they're in their uh, their true colors in breeding season, uh, they're very vibrant. Uh, the rainbows will get blue and red in them. The, the dace will get red bellies underneath. The fiery blacks are, have like a... Rudolph nose going on and almost nice like a rummy nose jet black. Style look. Yeah, kind of. Ah, uh, the bathroom tank. Yes, it finally happened. <laughs> so, what do you have going on in here? Uh, I have a group of ten chili rasboras and then some male endlers that I put in there to get it cycled that I may or may not leave in. Wow, what a pretty little tank. Thank you. What's this growing out of the top? That's ficus pumila. Uh, it's, it's a cutting right now. I'm trying to get it to root, but it seems to be doing well. I'm also trying to get the moss to grow up and out onto the log. What a neat little tank. And who are you? <laughs> ever had any problems with the cat getting the... Uh, never attacking any fish. He just uh, likes to drink out of them. <laughs> That's why I had to put lids on almost everything. I still have a few more to make. All of them are custom. I used the greenhouse siding panels. Yeah. Cut it down with some acrylic hinges. It's definitely like the cheapest route to go when you have this many tanks. I think I've only used two panels, so I spent less than $100, and I have you know, 20, almost 30 lids for that price. Who's this little guy? This is a farmer. He's a five-year-old parrotlet male. It's the smallest true parrot. Are you the smallest of the true parrots? Sure is. Mr. Farmer? He's quite vocal. Unfortunately, he hasn't spoken any words. Pretty colors, though. Yeah, he is. Hello. 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 I've tried so hard. <laughs> There's videos of it, and they sound like little robots. 
Say hello, Tech Tech. Oh! I don't think that was hello. It's not a happiness to see me. <laughs> okay, Rob, thanks so much for showing us around your place. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I'm glad you had the time to come over and check them out. It's nice to have somebody to talk to that actually enjoys them. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? it there's nothing like a tour with, a, with another club member, uh, another person that's really as interested in the hobby as you are, or maybe more so, arguably much more so in, in some degree. Uh, so I, I had a really great time, Rob. Thanks for showing us around. Now I'm off with my co-pilot here to uh, board game night for a little Halloween board gaming. Until next time, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank. Keep 40 clean tanks. <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.